Tom? 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 Yeah. You don't have anything on yeah. Is it muted? Huh? Is it muted? Mm -hmm. Oh, it is, it is muted. Please, 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 please. What a guy. Okay. Hello. The, pie, the mic is okay.
lecture to us, to speak to us, to inspire us as we try to make a step forward to improve our lives. Father, we ask that you bless everyone that is listening and bless us as we continue to worship you tonight in spirit and truth. Keep us and may this fire continue to burn our souls to hear the word of God. Be with those who may be in the moment of decision that they can make the decision to improve their lives or to accept you, O oh Father, as their Lord and Savior. So again, I continue to ask you, O oh dear Lord, to help us, to forgive us for all our shortcomings and to create in us and make us a new person. So again, be with the speaker and for all that is happening tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
it has it as a small gland, actually near the anus of the bee of the beaver is a small gland that secretes a, a chemical with a, with a similar formula to vanilla. So sometimes when you say, when you see this, when you see the label that says all natural, it is natural, but it is coming from the anal gland of a beaver. And yes, it is natural. If you don't believe me, go read up online. Also, for those of us, there's a red dye also that they extract from this bug that is found in South America that they used to give food that red color. So all these are so, so you have so it can be from plants and it can be from animals. Okay? Another one also is our lovely butter. Many of us eat a lot of butter. Butter as you know can be made from animals as well as many plants. Uh, we we do some chemical uh, reorientation or re redesign to get it in the form of butter. But that is also chemically added. Now, then we have the regular ones we do every day, the snacks that we eat, and the, and the juice that we drink that are filled with artificial sweeteners, and the snacks are filled, like, filled with stuff like MSG, which are not good for us. So we have to be careful. Now, we talk about, most of us talk about flavor, we only look at food. But there's also flavor in other things, such as in the things we put now here. Right? So give us the give it so beautiful the ladies, the cologne we the cologne we wear, okay, the soaps we use, these also have chemicals in them. And some of these chemicals are not good. Now what are the side effects of some of these chemicals? Now, because they are not natural, they are they are man-made, the body does not get rid of them as how we could get rid of a natural product. So for example, like in the comparison of the, uh, of the vanilla from the beaver, now although, it's, although it comes from the beaver, the body doesn't have a problem with it. But the man-made man one, the artificial one, the body will have a problem with it, especially if it is in large quantities. Now, what are the side effects of artificial flavorings? It can cause headaches. It can cause respiratory problems. And they are now saying since, since 2011, 2012, it may also cause ADHD in children. That's one of the reasons why the kids are so hyperactive because of the MSG or the sweeteners and other artificial ingredients that they are putting in the sugars in, in these compounds. Also, for the ladies and for gentlemen who do a lot of chemicals like Nicely smelling shampoos and nicely smelling soaps and other um, stuff that we may use in our, in our bodies or in our homes. These also come with side effects. And these are actually known to be carcinogenic. They are known to cause cancer. So it is very important. Also, as I mentioned, one sunscreen. Many of us are doing this during the summer we go to the sunscreen. Sunscreen, some of the sunscreen that, that, they, that are out there are known to cause cancer. So if you use us therefore be careful of not only what we put in our bodies, but also what we put on our skin. Because some of these can be dangerous to our health. Remember, we are our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, not in terms of just make this thing that we put in it, but everything this kind comes. We must make sure that we live according to what God gives us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
know. Okay, okay, I gotta go. 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 Okay. We hope that you've been enjoying the program so far and enjoying the ministries and all the things that have been done tonight. But as you know, uh, these ministries do take a force behind it, a monetary force. And if you are so happy with what's going on, you, you know, you really appreciate what's going on, and you would like to contribute or you would like to give, um, let me just share this information with you how you can support the ministry of picking your flavors lectures this week. You can email or you can sell to um, at treasury at living SDA church dot org or you can go on the Linden website, Linden SDA Church dot org and when you go on you'll see a button there that says to donate. And you can donate to the ministry and you can put exactly where you would like to direct your monies to. And so those are the two means where you can support the ministry. So it's again treasury at Linden SDA Church dot org. You can sell on that site and you can go on to the website to Linden SDA Church dot org and you can donate your funds. We appreciate your giving. We appreciate your um, listening to us and supporting our ministry. So uh, just spread the news and tell everyone how you can further God's cause. And of course, these lectures will be continuing and going on and they'll be on the YouTube and the website. So those are the information I share with you tonight. Thank you for listening and please continue to support. All right, good evening, everyone. I am going to interject right here. Uh, we are about to go into our special music, but we are having some challenges with the stream. Now, I know we have a special message, and I just want to get out this SOS. If you can hear us on the stream, on the stream we need you to be praying while the special music will be played. And so we're asking for your help because God has a special message tonight. Amen. And we know the adversary does not want it to come out crystal clear. And so we simply share out this SOS. Please say a prayer for our broadcast at this time. We're going to transition into our uh, theme song and then a meditation song. But during that time, we ask that you please be praying because we know God wants to set someone free tonight. Uh, so once again, please join us in prayer um, and uh, please be blessed by the following musical selections. Uh, turn to say it for right now. Alright. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you have preserved Linden. We have just experienced a flood. Uh, many of us had to go through multiple changes of clothes today just due to the rain and the impact that it had on our homes. But Lord, more important than how our homes are affected by the rain, Lord, we are praying that you would transform our hearts. And Lord, we are praying for this stream. You know, Lord, that there is something powerful that you are about to do. You know that there are many people who are listening right here, right now, who want to hear your voice. We are praying, Lord, that you would bless uh, the technicians who are vigorously working to fix this issue. And we pray, Lord, that you would give them the wisdom that comes from you to sort out the problem. And Lord, we thank you once again because we know you are all powerful and you will work this out. And so Lord, we pray once again that you would allow your Holy Spirit to pour down upon us, Lord. Uh, just as the rain was inescapable, we pray that the pouring out of your Spirit will be unmistakable and everyone who is listening will sense 
your prayer. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. I'm going to see what can happen. Amen. All right. Well, what I am thinking we can do now is a um, segue to the segue into the message. Well, what we are going to have to do is go into um, a special music. And I guess since, since I'm up here, I might as well just leave that out. So I'm going to just share a song with you all. And um, if, if we are not able to get the uh, stream fully up and running, um, then we're just going to do the best we can. We'll do the best that we can. And so this song is... Uh, one of my favorite songs, and it's Higher Ground. Many people may have heard me share this song, but it's, it's my favorite hymn because it reminds us that in order to reach the higher ground, we have to be willing to leave the lower ground. God wants to take us up, so I pray that you're blessed by this song. I'm pressing on. But they don't have to save all 
what has always been deep in my experience with singing is I think of people. And I, I have people in my mind as I'm singing. I'm thinking of someone who I know went through a struggle this week. Someone who I know and different individuals who, who went through tough, stressful situations that I'm aware of. But I sing the song vicariously. I sing the song being aware that the same hope that the, the author of the song got, God wants to give to each person who goes through a struggle. You may have been through a struggle this week, or a difficult circumstance, a stressful situation, and we go through many, especially when you live around people. You get stressful situations, I'm telling you. If, if, there's, if there's friction in the house, but I'm here to let you know, God still can bring you to higher ground. Amen. God still wants to bring you to higher ground. And the song is not a song that's saying, I, I, I am just hoping to go. It's saying, we have to be determined to say, Lord, I have my prayer, my aim is higher ground. And so I'm glad to share that song. Um, I guess I'll, I'll pause for a second to see where we are. Um, and if not, it looks like, well, we may just have to move forward uh, with our program. Just keep going. We're going to keep moving on, all right? So, you know, um, we understand, I have to say, we understand that the sound quality is, is having a challenge right now. So once again, we're, we're praying that you can uh, just keep this program in prayer. But for the sake of time, we are going to move forward into our message. And um, we just pray that you can gain as much as you can from this presentation. Now, let me... Um, Make sure I switch the PowerPoint here to the sermon PowerPoint. Uh, now, as we begin, I would like to start with a word of prayer. And so that's what we're going to go to at this time. Let me just make sure the PowerPoint is fully ready. Here we go. All right. I invite you to please bow your heads with me as we pray. And I know I, we don't have too much camera movement, so I can't move too much. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you because you want us to experience the genuine taste of the world. You are not content with us simply experiencing artificial flavor. You want us to experience the genuine flavor of your love and your presence. And so, Lord, I'm praying that you would speak, Lord, tonight. You know my prayer will always be, Lord, what would you have me to say? May your message come true. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we had a powerful presentation by Brother Coleman. That was just an excellent presentation. We talked about vanilla coming from multiple sources. Oh my goodness. Even coming from a beaver. You would never expect that. But our world is full of artificial flavors. Full of artificial flavors. And because of that, we have to be very uh, cautious as to what we consume. What we're putting into our bodies. Now, while there are physical, there's, there's uh, uh, food-related flavors, I'd like to present that truth can be flavored in and genuinely, or it can sometimes be made artificial. And the message tonight, we're going to be looking at our, the topic, are we artificially flavored faith? Because faith is what we put into the truth. When, when we hear something is true, the first response is to believe it, is to put your faith in it. But we have to be cautious, because if what we put our faith in is artificial, then it means that our faith will ultimately be artificial as well. But God wants us to have genuine faith. So we have to have a, a very, very um, discerning mindset. I'm going to the next slide on my PowerPoint. There was a study that was presented in March of 2019. And this was a study that was actually presenting the statement that vaping is better, or, yeah, vaping is better than smoking cigarettes. 
Now at that time, we didn't have, uh, I guess maybe there was, this, there, was, there was so much competition, you couldn't tell what was true and what was artificial. But this article came out and it was presented by a professor named uh, Professor Pelosa from the University of Cantina. Uh, and, I hope I pronounced that right. And Catania. It sits in Europe near Italy. Now, he presented this study, uh, and the, the results were saying that there is no trace of lung damage to those who vape. Now, that study was published, it was made to seem like it was the most strong, you know, uh, well put together um, article, well put together study. But there are some things we have to have when, when, we're, when we're evaluating studies. The first thing is that you want to make sure that a study has a large sample size. as well as white? How does it affect different demographics? That's how you come to an understanding of whether a study is valuable or not. Now this study, once again, it's, it studied only nine individuals. How much diversity could you have in there? And secondly, the best studies are studies that are, that are considered to be double blind studies. A double blind study is a study in which the people who are doing the research are not the people who are sponsoring the research. And on top of that, they, 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 they're not connected with the outcomes. They don't have a bias or a preference. This study was done by someone who had put uh, an, a, a large amount of money into the e-cigarette and vaping um, franchise. As a matter of fact, this gentleman uh, Professor Pelosa is the founder of a, um, uh, he says here, he's the founder of a center of excellence for, for the acceleration of harm reduction. Now that doesn't sound like it tells you much, but that center, it, the purpose of it is to advance vaping in the world, pretty much. They believe that vaping is the way to go, it's going to make more money than cigarettes, it's going to help more people. And so he's behind that, so he makes this study that says that vaping is safe. What happens when you believe something that's artificial? The consequences are not going to be artificial. The consequences will be real. Shortly after that study went out, in the same year, the CDC recognized an outbreak of, of e-cigarette and vaping associated lung injury hospitalizations and deaths. Now, the, um, I have a chart here and what you'll see is a big pyramid. And what we see is that in March, there was very few uh, cases. But as the months went on, the number of individuals who experienced hospitalizations due to lung injuries connected with vaping increased up to about even 230 people per week being hospitalized as a result of vaping and e-smoking, e-cigarettes. Now, this is showing the direct correlation that when falsehood goes out and people believe it, people get hurt, people are affected. One of the individuals who was affected by this, this misinformation was a girl by the name of Maddie Nelson. Now, Maddie Nelson is seen, uh, there's a picture of her uh, when she's younger, when she's, um, actually I should say, there's a picture of her as she's in a coma. She's in a medically induced coma. But what happened is that she 
uh, had begun smoke, began vaping at age 15. Vaping at age 15, and she kept um, vaping up until something traumatic started happening to her in July of 2019, which is the same year that Professor Pelosa put out his study. Okay, nice. All right, I got the thumbs up. We're good. Praise the Lord. Okay, so Maddie Nelson is one of the individuals who ends up being injured and hospitalized as a result of e-cigarettes and vaping. In July of 2019, she started feeling severe back and kidney pain. As she kept going, a month went by, and in August of 2019, she was brought into the hospital, she was rushed to the hospital, and she was put on oxygen, but her lungs were so damaged that the oxygen was not helping. And because of that, she had to be put in a medically induced coma by the anesthesiologist in the ICU. Now, being put into an, a medically induced coma, a coma is a last resort. It's something you do when you've, done, you've tried everything else and you're trying to preserve someone's brain from getting further damage. And so Maddie Nelson is this, it, by this point in her life, she is 18 years old being put into a medically induced coma as a result of the lung damage, the severe damage to her lung which she received through vaping. Now, she was diagnosed with something called e eosinophilic pneumonia, which is where there's a concentration of, an over-concentration of white blood cells in the lungs as a result of the inflammation that is taking place. So her, her lungs were so damaged. Um, I wonder if we got the, we're able to get the picture up. Um, she was, she had to be in that coma for three days. Now, when she came out of the coma, she gave this message. She actually took some pictures of herself and, and started spreading it, spreading the pictures on her social media. And this is what she said. She said, I am sharing my story. So you all will, are aware that there is something crazy in these pens. Speaking of e-cigarettes. or <laughs> These pens, that is not safe and almost cost me my life. I used to just tell myself it wouldn't happen to me. But it can and will happen to you too. Take my adv ad advice, don't smoke, don't vape. And then she puts hashtag vape, hashtag stop the vape. This is someone who is a victim of artificial truth. When this study had gone out trying to say that everything was safe, there were so many people who believed it and, went and began to, to, to vape. But once, as I mentioned, after the, when we look back at the CDC records of what took place, during that outbreak of uh, EVALI cases, EVALI is an acronym that they use for e-cigarette and vaping associated lung injuries, it was recorded that between the start of the outbreak to the finish, there were 2,807 reported cases, which is spanning, covering all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Now talk about a large sample size. Talk about um, a, a diversity of demographics. The results show that there was surely something dangerous that was taking place. But that information went out and it caused many young people, including Maddie, to be injured as a result of a false or artificial faith. An artificial faith, meaning she put her faith in something that was not true. And it cost her, almost cost her, her life. We have to be able to taste the difference between the genuine and the artificial. You know, just to mention this before I uh, transition into our more, the more spiritual content of this message. You know, e-liquids, e which is the liquid you put into the e-cigarette or the vape, it, they come in so many different flavors. Now, one flavor I want to just highlight is the cinnamon flavor. 
And it's, it's amazing how many sweet-related um, flavors they have, you know, just ice cream, all this stuff. But cinnamon, in and of itself, is not something that is, per se, dangerous to your lungs. But in the e-liquid, they have a cinnamon flavor, but the cinnamon is not, or the flavor is not genuine cinnamon. What's being used is a chemical called cinnamaldehyde. You notice how similar that sounds to formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is actually one of the chemicals that are in the vape um, liquid. But cinnamaldehyde is considered one of the most toxic flavors of e-liquids. It's been known to damage white blood cells. And so this is why we have to learn to, to develop a taste for the real we have to develop an appetite for those things that are genuine, those things that are true, and not uh, be lured by the things that are artificial. And so once again, what we believe um, will affect our lives. Our faith in God is something that we have to evaluate. Is our faith in God genuine or is it artificial? Now, genuine faith in God is always willing to deny self. So let's say, you know, uh, we go to a party. Someone is like, you know what? Hey, why don't you just drink this drink? But if you have faith in God, you're going to get to the place where you say, you know what? No, I'm not going to harm the body that God has given me. I'm going to say no. And eventually you'll get to the place where you say, I'm not even going to go to those areas where temptations like that are so strong. I'll stay away. But we have to ask the question, is our faith genuine or is it artificial? Is our faith based on truth or is it based on assumption? This is very important for us to understand because the Bible lets us know that there's going to come a time when people think they're serving God, but they really aren't. John 16 verse 1 and 2 says, Jesus speaking, he says, these things I have spoken unto you that you should not be offended. He says, they shall put you out of the synagogues. Those were the places of worship in Jesus' day. They will put you out of the synagogues, out of the churches, out of your places of worship. And he says, the time comes that whoever kills you will think he doeth God service. So what this means is some people are going to be thinking they're serving God, but it will be artificial. And so we have to ask ourselves, is my faith in God genuine or artificial? And once again, genuine faith is always willing to surrender to the word of God. That is what genuine faith is all about. Artificial faith will not surrender to the word and will of God. Now, last night, uh, sorry, not last night, but Wednesday night, we evaluated a beast from the sea. You know, we were, we were evaluating this beast, and we were saying that if a beast from the sea, a sea beast, should be pescatarian. But based on this beast's behavior in Revelation 13, this beast is not in any way pescatarian. It's not interested in fish. Instead, it's interested in worship. It has a bloodthirsty desire to receive worship. Now, just as much as this beast is carnivorous, we're told that there is a second beast that comes up after this, this first beast that we mentioned. But this second beast is also something that's uh, it's not what you expect. This second beast is... It's said to be like a lamb. It's said to be like a lamb. But what's interesting is that when you say, whenever you use the phrase lamb, automatically the first thing you're going to think about is innocence, harmlessness. And because of that connotation is why a lamb is usually associated with the character of Jesus. It's associated with being Christ-like. But here in Revelation, this second beast has uh, some contradictions. It's a lamb-like beast. Now, to understand why it's such a contradiction, we need to 
evaluate the word that's being used here. Now, in the Greek, if you wanted to speak about a, a harmless herbivore-like beast or animal, I should say, if you wanted to talk about a herbivore, the word you would use is tetrapos. And it's simply a word that literally means four-footed animal. Because mo when you think of four-footed animals, you'll think of a deer, a sheep, a goat. You typically are going to think of herbivores. Gentle animals, well, you know, sometimes a horse can kick you. But uh, for the most part, animals that are not carnivorous. But in Revelation 13, when speaking about this lamb-like beast, they do not use the word for herbivore. Instead, they use the word therion, which is the word that is, which means carnivorous beast or dangerous animal. What kind of, now that sounds like an oxymoron. Can you imagine a carnivorous lamb or a dangerous lamb? It's something you would not expect. So why is it that this beast, this, uh, this, uh, this entity that's being described is using these two con contradicting terms? It's a lamb-like beast that's carnivorous. We've mentioned that a beast in, in Revelation and really in um, ap apocalyptic literature, that is literature that's speaking of prophecy, um, it represents a nation. And so we want to ask the question, what nation does this lamb-like beast symbolize? Now this, um, just to kind of get straight to the point, while the sea of Catholicism was deluged, uh, or it deluged the old world in Europe, Protestant Christianity began to take root in the Americas. And so this beast represents the United States of America. It's, not, it's a nation that is founded on Protestant Christian principles. In the old world, they were, they were dealing with modernism and the, the effects of of having um, church and state uh, and all the, the problems that came from that. But in 1787, this country, the United States, was founded on, on Protestant Christian principles. And so, once again, Jesus is, is associated with that lamb-like character. Our nation was strong, was founded on principles that were, that, uh, yeah, I should say were, lamb-like, gentle, harmless. We were not interested in having church and state united. Instead, we had separation of the powers, separation also of church and state. And the evidence that our country was founded in this belief is seen on every dollar bill. On every one dollar bill, you'll see it say, in God we trust. This nation was founded on Protestant Christian principles. Now that phrase, in God we trust, you could actually look at it to say, in God, or, or you could say it this way, we have faith in God. But the question is, is that faith genuine or artificial? Is our faith in God as a nation genuine or artificial? Will this nation become carnivorous at some point. Now, the nature of being, it being carnivorous is particularly related to what it does with its laws. You see, in Catholicism, or I should say in the Roman Catholic um, regime, there, were, there was a union of church and state, and the, the church was able to coerce people to follow the dogmas of the church. It was able to coerce people to follow its dogmas. And if the United States gets to the place where we start forcing people to follow religious laws, then we have become carnivorous as well. The passage of Scripture, Revelation 13, 11, goes on to say that this lamb-like beast at some point speaks like a dragon. And a nation speaks through its laws. It speaks through its laws. Now, as long as we are cognizant of the need to keep church and state separate, 
um, this country, in a sense, may not have that carnivorous element. Our, our country must continue to fight for religious liberty. In other words, allowing people to follow the dictates of their conscience when it is not harming others. And that's where we have, there is a line that is drawn as it relates to ISIS and you know people trying to fly planes into uh, the, tr the Twin Towers. Uh, once someone's religion begins to hurt someone else, that religion becomes carnivorous itself. But we as a state must seek, or we as a country must seek to defend religious liberty and to preserve the separation of church and state. Now, so we're describing this lamb-like beast once again, this lamb-like beast. But this uh, nation goes a step further than, than just... Um, implementing laws. The passage of scripture that we're reading goes on to describe that this power, this nation begins to do miracles, wonders. Revelation 13 verse 13 says, and he doeth, speaking of this lamb-like beast, he does wonders, great wonders, so that he makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. So what this beast is doing is actually mimicking the true prophets of God. So it's, 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 it's doing an artificial display of, of um, true worship. And so these, you know, it's using these miracles, but what does it use the miracles to do? It goes on to say that he uses this power, he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth to worship the first beast. So this power is leading people to worship an artificial God. Is, are the people who are putting their faith in this beast expressing genuine faith or artificial faith? It has to be artificial faith because it, this beast is leading them to worship an artificial God. It's leading them to worship another created being. Uh, even worse, another beast. And so this is something we, we have to be very, uh, very cautious of. Are we allowing ourselves to be so caught up with the trend of, of um, uh, the spiritual, spirituality in our world that we're not able to tell the difference between true faith and artificial faith, between genuine faith and artificial faith? We need to be able to tell the difference because our relationship with God depends on if we believe his word, if we believe his word. And if we're not willing to believe his word, our faith is artificial. Now, God saw that we would have issues with this kind of artificial truth and artificial um, faith being prolific in our world. And the message was given in Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1. It says, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or wonder like calling fire down from heaven, but if he does the miracle and it comes to pass and then says, let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them, this is what God says. He says, don't listen to that prophet. That is a false prophet, an artificial prophet. The simple way to determine whether someone is a true prophet or a false prophet is what God do they lead you to? And furthermore, do they lead you to the covenant? One theme that we've been covering in this series so far is that the covenant of God, the stipulations of God's covenant is the Ten Commandments. And we see that in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10, in that it says that God will write his law in our hearts. There's only one bracket of law, only one reference in Scripture that you can find where God is writing laws, and it's only the Ten Commandments. And Hebrews 8, verse 10 is referring to the new covenant. And so which one of the, the, the laws in the, in the Ten Commandments 
would this prophet be leading you to break if he says, let's go after other gods? Number one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Simply by knowing, being aware that the Ten Commandments is the litmus for helping you to discern between the genuine and the artificial can help you avoid having to have the real consequences that come when you follow an artificial prophet. And so this message is what God is giving. There are, there are artificial, there will be an artificial prophetic movement that leads you to worship an artificial God. And so the question is, where will you put your faith? Now remember, genuine faith is willing to surrender to the word of God. And so God, in, in every day, God is looking to see whether your faith in him is genuine, whether your love to him is pure. And so how we treat the word of God today will determine whether our faith will be genuine or artificial when this crisis comes. Today, we have to make the choice to say when we hear the word of God, we surrender to it. When we hear that God tells us to, to keep his commandments, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If we're, we're hearing that God is saying he wants us to, to obey him, to serve him, to surrender to him, we have to make that choice today to follow him. And so, once again, so this lamb-like beast is dangerous. It's a carnivorous lamb. That's an oxymoron, a carnivorous lamb. But the question is, what do you do when you are surrounded by carnivores? What do you do when you are simply like a sheep and you're trying to follow Jesus, who is your shepherd? What do you do when you're surrounded by hungry carnivores? This is a simple answer. You dare to be a Daniel. You dare to be a Daniel. Daniel was someone who was facing a, a political power that put a religious um, command or um, uh, mandate upon uh, the, the nation. And this monarch was forcing everyone to worship him as God. But Daniel said, I want to be faithful to God's covenant. The, co the first commandment says, I will you shall have no other gods before me. And Daniel made the choice to say, I will worship only God. I will not bow down to any other person, image, or idol. I will serve the Lord God. And because he did that, he was, he was convicted and thrown into a den of carnivores. He ended up being surrounded by carnivores, but Daniel trusted in the Lord. Now, I want to ask a question. Do you want to have that kind of faith where you can trust in God even when you're surrounded by carnivores, where you can surrender to God and follow him even when your circumstances seem to be carnivorous against you? Do you want that kind of faith? I want that kind of faith uh, where we can say in life or death, I choose the Lord. In riches or in poverty, I choose the Lord. I'm not going to choose to break the covenant or to serve an artificial God, anything on this world. I'm choosing to serve the true God. I want that decision. I'm sure I want to invite you to make that same choice. But God blessed, and Daniel, though he had to spend a whole night surrounded by carnivores, when the monarch that threw him in the lion's den, came out and asked, he, he hopefully, he said, Daniel, has your God delivered you? Daniel was able to speak up and say, my God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth. God wants to do the same thing for us, you know, and as I can imagine Daniel at that point, uh, because David had already lived and died and the Psalms were written. I can imagine Daniel could relate to Psalm 34 that said, the angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivereth them. I can imagine that Daniel in that moment could relate to Psalm 37, 25 that says, I've been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. God wants you to have that experience, but to have it, you have to dare to be a Daniel. 
You have to dare to say, I'm going to choose to have genuine faith even when I'm surrounded by carnivores, even when I'm surrounded by individuals who want uh, the worst to happen to me. And the reality is that God wants us to experience that genuine. He wants us to experience his genuine goodness, not artificial goodness, you know, like the artificial uh, cinnamon, cin cinnamaldehyde. <laughs> God doesn't want you to experience that. He wants you to experience the genuine goodness of God, the kind of goodness that leaves you praising him. You know, there's a song that we sing so often. Um, I probably just want to try to share it. Um, it says, I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me for all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. Then it says, for all my life you have been faithful. Yes, oh, 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 all my life you have been so, so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen. That's the kind of experience that God wants each of us to have, where even when we're surrounded by carnivores, we can sing of the goodness of God because we've tasted his love and we can say, this is genuine. God wants us to have that experience, but we have to, we have to make that choice between the genuine and the artificial, between partial surrender and full surrender to the will of God. At this time, I want to invite you to pick your flavor. Do you choose genuine faith, which is saying, I choose to surrender to God? Or are you going to be content with an artificial faith, which simply follows God for the benefits, but then leaves him when you find something else more advantageous? Do you want genuine faith? I want to invite you to make that choice, to choose truth over the artificial. And now, if it's your decision to say, I want to choose God, I invite you to simply type into the chat, if you're, li if you're watching online, simply chat, I <laughs> simply type, I want Jesus. And if it's your decision for those who are here in person, if it's your decision to say, I want Jesus, I invite you to please stand with me as we um, come to our close. Now, we are, because of the rain, we don't have all the, we don't have everything with us right now, so we're going to do a simple, a, a simpler closing. But I do want to just reach out to those who are viewing online and those who are here. If you want to make a decision, you recognize that you've been living with an artificial faith in God one that's not really fully surrendered to his word. You may know of something that God wants you to do that you've been holding back. It could be someone God wants you to forgive or someone God wants you to speak with more kindness to. It could be a decision that you need to make regarding following his word. Even it could, be, it could relate to working on the Sabbath, and whatever it may be. If you want to make a decision where you are saying, I'm willing to dare to be a Daniel, to go all the way with God, even though my circumstance looks carnivorous, I'm choosing to trust Jesus can shut the lion's mouth. If that's your decision, uh, I want to invite you to scan the QR code that is on the screen. And that QR code is going to bring you to a form, and you can... Uh, fill out that form and then also put your decision down. There's three options there. You can receive Bible studies, uh, receive special prayer, or if it's your decision to get baptized, to fully commit to following God. 
and make that public decision, you can simply check that, ba- that box for baptism. And so we're going to um, conclude our program tonight, but we want to invite you to, to make that decision to follow God's word fully. And I'm telling you, whenever you surrender to God, you begin to taste his goodness, and it is not artificial. It's not like, uh, man, there's so many stories I could tell you. When I first tried Starburst, there was a, a kiwi-flavored Starburst. And to me, because I, I grew up in Hawaii and I knew the sweetness of a real kiwi, even Starburst, kiwi-flavored Starburst, tastes like chemicals to me because I knew the genuine, the real flavor. Now, of course, if you grow up on chemical kiwi, then maybe you might like that still. But at the end of the day, God wants to give you the genuine flavor of his love, something that far, is far better than the artificial and far better uh, as far as it relates to the after effects on your life. And so we're going to just say a word of prayer as we close out. And um, we just praise God for this opportunity. The door of mercy is still open. So please bow your heads with me as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you because we know you want to give us the true flavor of your love. You're not content with us simply um, just being able to be deceived, uh, given artificial flavors by false religious systems and, you know, just misconceptions about Jesus. You want to give us the taste, the supreme flavor by allowing us to experience Christ when we surrender to you. And so, Lord, I pray for those who are watching online and those who are here in the church, we are praying that you would bless each person with a taste of your goodness as a result of them choosing to surrender to you tonight. Help us, Lord, to surrender. We know the battle in our flesh is tough, but, Lord, you have given us enough tokens of your goodness to let us know that you will take care of us when we surrender to you. So help us, Lord to surrender. Please bless us and bless all that takes place even tomorrow um, here at the church. May your blessing be upon this series and those who are watching and listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we want to invite you to come out tomorrow at noon as we will be leading to the the close of our uh, Pick Your Flavor lecture series. We will have a, a meeting in the morning at noon or in the afternoon at noon, but we will end officially in the evening at 6.15. And so we invite you to join us for both programs. Uh, So thank you once again for tuning in, and have a wonderful, wonderful Sabbath evening. God bless you. Amen.